We've been talking about God's design for love. We're going to now talk about God's design for our bodies. We'll begin with a review of male and female anatomy. It is often said that the brain is actually the primary sex organ because the hormonal processes that start in the brain direct both male and female fertility. For a man, hormonal messengers are sent from the pituitary gland in his brain to the testicles inside the scrotum. Testicles. These male reproductive organs are located outside of the man's body so that sperm, which are very sensitive to heat, can be kept cooler than his normal body temperature. The testicles have a twofold function. First, to produce sperm, and secondly, to secrete male sex hormones. The most commonly known male sex hormone is testosterone, which is responsible for triggering puberty in males. This results in the growth of body hair, a changing voice, and development of body mass. Males have much larger muscle mass and body strength than women because they have 10 to 20 times the amount of testosterone than do women. Healthy males will produce sperm continuously from puberty until they die. After sperm are produced in the testicles, they pass into the epididymis to mature. It takes each sperm about 70 days to form and mature. Approximately 40 million sperm are expelled through the vas deferens, or sperm duct, and the urethra during ejaculation as part of semen. It's important to note that it is not necessary physically to ejaculate at all. The body reabsorbs what is not expelled. The seminal vesicles add to the fluid portion of the semen. The urethra allows either the elimination of urine from the bladder or the ejaculation of semen. A complicated system of valves within the prostate gland makes it impossible for both urine and semen to be eliminated at the same time. In addition, during arousal, the prostate gland changes its shape and allows a pre-ejaculatory secretion to take place in order to balance the acidity of the urethra. Present in this fluid are viable sperm. So if there is any contact between the penis and the vagina during the period of arousal, but before ejaculation, enough sperm may be transmitted to cause a pregnancy. This explains why withdrawal as a form of contraception is often ineffective. So the takeaway messages here are that after puberty, men are always fertile because of continuous sperm production, and that genital contact can lead to pregnancy due to pre-ejaculatory secretions. And it's important to note that puberty is marked by the ability of a young man to ejaculate, which sometimes happens spontaneously during a dream, known as a wet dream which occurs more during puberty when hormones are fluctuating. There is nothing sinful about having a wet dream, as opposed to trying to ejaculate by masturbation, which is always sinful and something to confess in the sacrament of reconciliation.